Hello everyone and welcome to the next talk at the TechBlick PV event and I'm honored to introduce Tristan Watson. Tristan is Professor for Material Science and Engineering at Swansea University and um, please pay attention today he will within 20 minutes solve the challenges for large-scale manufacturing of printed perovskite solar cells. Tristan, with that over to you. Thank you very much, and, and thank you very much for the kind introduction. It's 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 lovely to be here uh, to to talk about uh, the challenges of scale for printed perovskite. This is something that in Swansea we've been thinking about for a few years now. Uh, even when the first few papers emerged, you know what must be sort of eight years ago now, we started to think, okay, how how you know how can this new material be printed? And, and previously been working on disensorized solar cells, so we were fortunate enough to be in a you know in a reasonably proximal field to try and take a crack at doing this and working with this really exciting new material just a little bit about where i'm from before i before i get into the meat of it i'm from a, a research organization called specific and we do work right the way from you know the fundamental science behind scale up right through to active building so our uh, journey uh, really ends at the point where we're able to get these printed materials onto buildings and we have our own active buildings. So we, we exist within off-grid active buildings powered by a range of different technologies, in, in, including printed PV or, or deposited PV. In this case, in the bottom right-hand corner, our roofs are powered by evaporated SIGs laminated onto steel structures. And we'd very much like to take uh, the next generation of, of solar cells, be that OPV or perovskites, and also create our roofing uh, from that as well. And we'd like to power our own buildings, which is what we're, we're aiming for. So we've got that whole process from materials development through to scale up technologies, through to implementation of those technologies into the fabric of a building. So our ambitions are buildings as power stations. And really what we spend most of the time thinking about, and of course we're a university academic, so there's lots of drinking coffee. Um, and, and, and what we also try to do then is think how do we take something which is so good and that's spin coating uh, into a pilot line process and then into an actual building application and the thing with spin coating is it's really good uh, it's a dynamic process it evaporates the solvent it nuclei nuclei and crystallizes the perovskites all within this really short time frame it lends itself to the use of anti-solvents in order to really um, encourage that 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 crystallization nucleation and so when we think about the uh, upscaled version of, of, of spin coating where we take a, a liquid and we dump it all onto the substrate at once then a lot of those dynamic processes are not possible so we have to almost invent the next set of technologies that allows us to take quite a complex but rewarding material like perovskite and get it to crystallize in a homogeneous fashion which is is our ultimate challenge and we, and we spend a lot of our time thinking about that process and, and there are in most um, uh, laboratories there are a couple of different scale-up routes i think in the previous talk you would have heard about some really excellent processes in inkjet printing with with Saule. there are other methods that you can do it and we would classify them probably into two main uh, sets so there's roll to roll uh, printing, which is a uh, method by which you, you are no doubt familiar to the, 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 the people of this conference, where you take a material from one roll to another, uh, and that can be quite a rapid process. It's um, used extensively in industry at the moment, for example, in the steel, so that just across the water from Swansea, there's Port Albert Steelworks, so they coat you know, galvanized layers of zinc and organic coatings to make steel products. So it's a well-known industrial route, and particularly in, in this field, it's well-known. And that's on a flexible substrate typically to allow it to go around the coiled material so that could be ITOPET, could be metal foil it could be steel um, on the and, and to a certain extent it could be flexible glass as those new emerging those are coming through. on the right then uh, we have sheet to sheet processes which are generally done in a more batch style process typically have lower capital costs but i'm sure that uh, Infinity PV and others talking here will have will have something to say about costs of roll to roll versus sheet to sheet, um, and and it lends itself to other pr processes such as maybe screen printing, very popular in the textiles industry, and typically is deposited onto uh, more static substrates in a batch process. Now, if we bring that into uh, the field of perovskite research, then we have to think about the things that might determine 